Hello dear, let's give all glory to God. Let's bless each other and be at peace. You're the missionaries to save the world. You shall take possession of that land. Thank you for the uh, praise. May this uh, worship be the worship where you, you receive the greatest blessings. As we live on, we face a lot of hardship. At that time, without us even knowing, we ask these kind of questions inside of us. Uh, to the low class or the beginner believers might think this way and say, oh, God is alive, but why are these kind of problems come to me? We can ask these kind of questions to ourselves. And again, oh, if God say he loves me, then why are these kind of hardships come to me? But if you look closely, they uh, it was the fault of their own, but they kind of they asked that kind of question. They don't see their own fault, but they just ask God, Oh, he said he loves me, but why are you giving me these kind of problems? And some people ask, Oh, how, until when is this problem going to last? A father who owns a big company wants to inherit this to his son. There is someone that just gives it to their children, but there, so there is a person that just that uh, prepares them and then gives it, uh, inherits it to them. But mostly, they want to train the children and then give it to them. That is, so that this uh, company can continue on. So they to train them, they will send off their children and make them face hardship. If you see in John four twelve, and say, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He said he will do even greater things. The things that God has given us isn't just given to us. It is given to us so that uh, we can receive training inside of that. Because we know the world. And because we know Satan that is uh, moving this world right now. Inside of all the problems and situations inside of our lives, God is training us. The Israelites were enslaved for 400 years. But God has set them, uh, liberated them from that slavery. They could have just entered into the land of Canaan, but they had to go across the wilderness. Uh, it is a very dangerous place. The snakes come out. And they were they were lacking water, but why did God make them cross cross this wilderness? It's not by coincidence. It is told that it is said in the Bible God has guided them, guided the Israelites with the pillar of fire and cloud. 
He has guided the Israelites with the pillar of fire and the and cloud. But why did God make them face that kind of problems inside of the wilderness? What kind of answer and conclusion must we have? And that answer is inside of today's passage. If you see in verse 16, let's read together. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your father did not know that he might humble you and test you to do good in the end. Amen. It is that he might humble you and test you to do good in the end. It is telling us the reason why he has given us this blessing. It's not by coincidence these things happen. He says, Beware lest you say in your heart. Then this is when all the problems of the world and all the problems you're facing will be different. Yes, we may also face hardship and problems. But there is an answer there. And say, at last, God wants to give blessing. And what is this blessing? It is first. It is the blessing that is like conclusion. It's uh, conquering the land of Canaan. For us, we must save the world and the 237 and the 5,000 people groups. It's not just for our own wealth. Wealth was uh, possible even inside of the slavery in Egypt. All the people say they're facing hardship, but they all live on. When they were, uh, when the Israelites were enslaved, they still lived on. If you see in Exodus 16, you can see that they say that they do not have anything to eat and they resent against God. And what, is, what was the point that is, if you see in Exodus, said, and when they were enslaved, they fed themselves until they were full. And, and they, they said, oh, we could have lived on there, but why did you drag us out into the wilderness and try to kill us? And they were resenting. It is to save uh, myself that is uh, caught in the destiny of this world and is trying to save the church that is being mocked at. And it is to save the 237 nation, and that is why God is guiding us. If we're just uh, living on so that we can just live on, then that is uh, that is a low class level. All the people live that way, but that's not for us. We live on to save uh, with for the covenant of saving the 237 nation. For the 237, 237, we have we do business. Why do we study? It is to save the 237 nations. That's why we study. Why do we need health? Be to save the 237 nations. That's why we need health also. Uh, somebody said, oh, 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 you're saying world evangelization, world evangelization. You say, you're dreaming big. 
Is that a dream? Isn't this something that God has promised us from the beginning? God called Abraham and said, The whole world will receive blessings through you. As one person said, Oh, Pastor, because you say world evangelization, that is why I do not like you. So you're uh, talking about some such great things, that is why I don't like you. But you must not forget that God has called us so that we can do the uh, save the 237 nations. We must look towards the things that above in order for us not to look at the things of the land. People are saying, oh, we're falling into... Oh, uh, falling into self-centeredness because they do not see what God has prepared for the 237 nation. That is why they fall into self-centeredness. They are in only uh, centered around their family. God told the Israelites to conquer the land of Canaan and God's uh, covenant and God's plan is to save the 237 nations and world evangelization and for that God is uh, guiding us first God is telling us to confirm how God takes care of us inside of the wilderness and inside of the problem. God trains us, but how does He train us? He's telling us to confirm how that He takes care of us inside of the problems. If you see in, Gen in the book of Genesis, God calls Abraham out. And as he was calling Abraham, he told what he must do. But Abraham lost hold of that. And because famine came, he turned his direction to Egypt. If he really held, knew the promise and held on to that promise, then he wouldn't have gone to Egypt. He must have said that, oh, there's a famine, or oh, God said all nations will receive blessing through me, then how is God going to leave me? That's what he must have said. But because uh, he, did, he forgot about this, when he was faced with the famine, that problem, he turned his way to Egypt. to the Israelites when they uh, placed the blood of the lamb on the doorpost they were set free eternally but as they were walking through the wilderness they were faced with the Red Sea and they were faced with Jordan But it does not matter what kind of problems that they may face in the wilderness or in front of the Red Sea or in front of Jordan. Will not God take care of them who has set them free eternally from Egypt? But how did the Israelites say? What, what did the Israelites say? the nature and the scars that were inside them for 400 years that came out and they resented and that in front of the Red Sea in front of the Red Sea the, all the Israelites they must say oh let's see what God will do but they resented and 
They said, why did you bring us out of Egypt and try to kill us here? But that is why when Moses said, see the salvation of God that He will do. That is why wherever we go, we must hold on to the belief or the faith that God will take care of everything. Because they see the covenant uh, in a small, uh, as, uh, as a little thing, and they see the problem in a greater thing. That is why they're always facing problems and hardship. All the problem is finished. In John 19.30, God said, Jesus said, Jesus promised to us staking His life. He said, I have finished everything. There is no problem. If problems come to you, that is just the time where you confirm that God has finished everything. If you really have this experience, if problems come, there is no problem. It doesn't matter to you. If problems come to you, you will be able to know that, oh, God has really finished everything. And that is when Christ becomes your Christ. That is when gospel becomes my gospel. But if you do not have the experience, because of uh, the long-standing scars and natures that is inside of you, when you're faced with a problem, you are hindered. If Christ doesn't become my Christ and gospel does not become my gospel, then whenever problem comes, you are faced. Uh, when you're faced with the problem, you will be hindered. You're. Uh, deceived by yourself, you're deceived by the world, and you'll be deceived by Satan. When the Israelites were going through the wilderness, they had a lot of problems. Every time problems came to them, they uh, fell into despair, they resented, and they gave unbelief. They even resented against God. And they face the critical pro uh, critical pain of face uh, being bitten by a snake and dying, and that is saying in Numbers twenty one five through six. But even at that time, when you just discard your unbelief and go go back to Christ, then you will receive salvation. And second point, what kind of evidence will God give us through the problem? At the end, God through the problem will give us evidence and making us go back to the world. And that is why in Acts 1.8 it says, As a, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will become my witnesses in, to the ends of the earth. God gives us a evidence and makes us go back to the world as a witness. Yes, Israelites went inside of the land of Canaan. But the people in land in, in Canaan they were all afraid of Israel of the Israelites and they were their hearts melted in jo Joshua five one. As the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until we had crossed over, their hearts melted. And they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites. Even before they even went inside the land of Canaan, the evidence was shown into the world. If you see in Joshua 6.1, 
And so Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark and the covenant of, of the Lord, and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And these were the people who saw the evidence of Jordan. Are you faced with a problem? Then God will give you the evidence so that the world and even Satan can know. You do not fade, uh, you do not crumble because of the problem. God will give you the evidence to show the world and to Satan. And that is why if you see Romans 16, 20, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. That is, that this means that God will show us the evidence to show Satan. If you see Psalms 21, 5, that so you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He's saying they're preparing a feast for the enemies. And it's telling us that God will give us the evidence to sh have victory over enemy. Follow after me. There is no problem. Nothing can become a problem. All the problems that you have, you will have evidence and you will stand as the witness. And you will stand before the world as the witness. And third, then why is God preparing us inside of the problem and giving us uh, evidence? It is to prepare and make the vessel to give all glory to God. Let's look at verse 12 through 15 today. Or 12 through 13. If you see in 12 through 13, otherwise when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine, and then it says, and when you're when your herd and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. But verse 14 is very important. It says, Then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God. You must hold on to the mystery of not crumbling after success. At the end, all the people crumble but really receive the answer where you you must not crumble. Um, may you have the confession of the 1 Corinthians 15.10. It says, And His grace to me, God, I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. And this is why God has trained the Israelites inside of the wilderness. And second point. Then what, what is it that um, we must hold on to as a conclusion and experience? The conclusion is said. It says, I will give, I will give you blessing. Then what must we concentrate on? That is the nine settings. A look inside of the bulletin. There is the nine settings inside of it. And this is what Jesus is telling us. If you really concentrate and have these nine settings, wherever you go, you will have victory. And what kind of, whatever the situations may be, you will give the influence of saving them. 
But because you do not know this, you fall into conflicts. You say you believe, but you have no strength. That is why you have a lot of reasons, a lot of uh, excuses, and you fall into uh, problems. And when you're faced with problems, you resent. That is why you cannot change the stream of the field. Early church, they had the strength of these nine settings. Be even the Antioch church, they, because they had the strength, that is why even they were persecuted, they had success. You can't have victory without the strength. But without the strength, if you have victory, the more you have success, you will face more problems. This is something that is given from, given to us from above. This is the throne uh, transcending time and space and the light to shine the 237 nations. Christ is on, on the throne and God's kingdom is transcending time and space and the only Holy Spirit is the light to save the 237 nations. This is the gospel. The thing that is given from above, this is the gospel. Really uh, enjoying Christ is the gospel and this is the real church today our choir gave praise if you see in revelation in the book of revelations it says the one that gave us salvation is seated on the throne yes christ is seated on the throne and he uh, he takes care of all the things of this world and he gives us uh, what we need and through the church he is holding on to all other works and God is uh, leading the world evangelization and the throne is the control tower for that work. And that is why this is the blessing of the throne. All the people uh, of the Bible, they all had this uh, and enjoyed this. And you can see that it is talking about the throne and angels in the, inside the Bible. Why is it written? There? Why is that written inside the Bible? It's telling us to enjoy it. It is talking about the throne and angels inside the Bible. It is telling us to really enjoy that. And that is when the power to transcend time and space will happen. This is when uh, evangelism takes place. This is shown as the light to save the 237 nations. And that is what we must really remember. Really remember that the blessing of the throne is inside me. The blessing of the throne is inside me. Always remember that. Enjoy that and pray for that. If you see in the book of Colossians, it said Christ is seated on the right hand of God. And Paul said, look to the things above. Think of the things that is in heaven. Don't think of the things of this land. 
But we are so used to this world, that is why we have no choice but to live that way. We must look to the things in heaven, but we, we always look to the things in the land, that is why. The blessing that is given to us, that's not the, pro, uh, that's not the blessing that is given to us. The th blessing of the throne is inside me. If you do not enjoy this, then you're just the same as the un unbeliever and you're ju you just live your life as an unbeliever. You say you have faith, but you're just living your life in unbelief. But if you really enjoy this, this is the essence of all essence. That is why problems do not become a problem to you. And this is when you, your eyes to see everything is opened here. You must always enjoy this through prayer that, and really receive the power that is from, given from above. And secondly, then where must we edit this? We must edit this inside of me. The blessing that is given from above and that is which is given to me, we call that salvation. God has created us in His own image. That is why in Genesis 1.27, it says we are created in the image of God. But if we do not have this, then we are just a dead spirit. If you lose hold of this, then Christianity is the same as all other religions. And if you see in Genesis 2.7, it says, And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. It is saving myself first. <laughs> Inside of the state, that is when we receive answer. Inside of this, this is when we our spiritual state is restored. God has given us the breath of life. I, we must enjoy this. A human beings can give worship. That is because the Spirit of God is inside of me. That is why we can give worship. If you see in John 20, 22, and with that, he breathed it onto them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The same as Genesis 2 7. This is given to us as blessings, and that is why we can receive these blessings. As in, if you see in Acts 1 8, it said, But if when you receive power, And if you see in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For we are all baptized by one Spirit. It is the same as Genesis 2, 7. Uh, it is saying they were in one Spirit. They were baptized by one Spirit. This must be revived inside of us. This is salvation. The image of God is restored. And the Spirit of God that is being revived inside of us, that is salvation. When our uh, spirit is revived, then nothing becomes a problem. If you see in Genesis 13:18, uh, Abram uh, built an altar. Why did he build an altar? He built an altar knowing that he is a spiritual being to receive the spiritual strength. Abraham just let go of everything and built an altar 
so that the Spirit of God can work. If you see in 2 Second, uh, Second Kings 18, 1, 15, it's talking about Obadiah. Uh, he uh, hid 100, 100 uh, priests. How can you do that kind of thing? Because he enjoyed the Spirit of God that is working inside of him. Uh, as I gave the meditative, uh, holy meditative prayer, I read this passage. Uh, Elijah knew that the king was facing hardship and in the midst of crisis. But that is why Elisha knew to save those people, he needed a greater strength than his uh, teacher. That is why Elisha asked Elijah um, to give him the double portion of the Spirit. Having this... Uh, have, the working of the Im or the Spirit of God, we must really enjoy this. When we really give worship, that is when the Spirit of God is really at work. And that is the throne inside of me. That is, that is why we have a greater a blessing than the Garden of Eden inside of us. Third, the blessing that is given from above, or the grace that is given from above, that is the salvation that is inside of me. But it doesn't just end there. It is shown inside of the field where you can move the field that is the throne if something that is given from above that is salvation and the spirit that works inside of me that is salvation and this is shown as the blessing of the throne where you can move the field And this uh, blessing is this is this blessing is called unprecedented and never repeated blessings. And these answers will come to us inside of me, we're inside of the church, and all of our studies or workplaces. When we really receive uh, this grace that is given from above, we are given the answer of unprecedented and never repeated answer. If you do not enjoy this, then you will just be a s slave to work and people and the world. If you do not know these nine settings, then you have no choice uh, but to just attend church and not receive anything. You must really have uh, the blessing of the throne, and He has placed this inside of our spirit, inside of our soul, and given us all these blessings. And God's power is placed inside of my vessel. And that is why uh, the greater blessing than Garden of Eden is at work inside of me. Then where must my soul or spirit must face? 
then if we must uh, di direct our eyes to the throne. That is when God will be at work and we can receive the blessing that God is giving us. When I'm facing towards the throne, God has given us the uh, blessing to save the world. And this is, connect, this is the light that will shine the 237 nations and that will be shown through my life. I'll come to a conclusion. There are three types of uh, believers. There's a person that walked the walk of faith without knowing the conclusion, and there is a person that know the conclusion, and there are people who hold on to that conclusion and in belief and believe. and receive the blessing and enjoying that blessing. So may you become that person who hold on to conclusion and really restoring faith. Dear God, we give you thanks. May we restore the faith of those who held on to the conclusion. May the nine settings be set inside of us and be restored. 